Good evening, Maida. Thank Good you. Good evening. For, thank you for joining me here. I'm so excited to have you here. You are a money energy specialist and your business is called Soul Free Now. So if anyone wants to um, get in contact with Maida after this amazing discussion that we're about to have, because Maida told me about something that happened to her last week. And when she was starting to tell me all about this, I just thought, oh my goodness, we have to record this. We have to let everybody hear this because <laughs> it was so, it was so amazing. And you're still feeling amazing, aren't you? I am, yeah, I am. <laughs> transformed. I feel transformed. Like, I feel different than I was before. Yeah, and and it was very um, interesting in the last session that you came to as well, the Fast 3T session, you were like, at one stage you went, oh, my God, I just realised, like, everything is possible. Like, I've, I've, I've known it logically before, but I'm, I'm like, feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd forgotten the connection between the experience I had and that session, like not that long before. And then you pointed it out to me and it's, it's yeah, it's really true. It's like I got to yeah. feel that everything was possible. Um, yes. more, which I have felt before, but there was a, a depth to it that I hadn't touched previously until that session. Yeah. Yay. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then what comes up in the world around you? What's reflected in the world around you when you went off to your amazing, beautiful massage therapist that you've had for a long time, haven't you? Yeah, so my, my, she's actually my friend. Like, we're great yeah. mates. And every Wednesday, she gives me a massage. And we yeah. talk about the world and the nature of the universe. And then we have a coffee. And then she we got, walk the dogs and she gives me a massage every week. So oh, she knows yeah. my body intimately. And she's an intuitive massage therapist too, which, you know, like I'm an intuitive, so I vibe with that. Um, should I just tell you what happened then? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, okay. So I lay on the table, which is in my home. Like she comes to my house and we do it. So I lay on the table and I just felt like my consciousness was slightly different. Like there was a shift in, it's like I was in an altered state of consciousness. It's like I just laid on the table and realised. And I got this knowing and it was, I can answer any question at all about the nature of the universe right now. And I've never had that feeling before or that experience of my mind being slightly, like I want to sort of tilt to the left. Um, so I said to my friend, I feel like I could answer any question about the nature of the universe, so let's play, like ask me some stuff. And she did. And it was the most amazing experience that went for an hour where she was like asking these really deep, delicious, juicy questions. And I was getting these answers that had no thought involved in, like, I didn't think of any answers. I just, like, opened my mouth and went, Bleh, and, like, the stuff came out, but it wasn't but It was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's gold. It's so gold. I can't it wait. It was just right amazing. Here. And what was transformative, I think, for me is that I got to feel the vibration of the truth of what the answers were as well as the vibration of the content. Like, the things they talked about, I got to experience and I think that's what's transformative because I got to experience what, you know, like all deep spirituality says, which is at the core of us is divinity that can't be touched by anything. And I've read that a million times. I know, understand it. I've channeled about it before, but never in this like really deep experiential way. So I feel like I can speak about it now totally differently, even though I was speaking about it before. Yeah. And you, you also said that your intuition kind of came to you before when we were talking and you'd kind of hear it and then you would speak it as this felt like you were just directly speaking it out of your mouth. Like you didn't actually know what was going to come out of your mouth yeah. until you'd said it. And then yeah. you were like hearing it as if you're, a, you know, you're hearing it, made us hearing it too. Yeah, that's right. So in my <laughs> sessions, normally I hear a voice in my head. Or sometimes I get like a knowing and I speak yeah. from that. But this was totally different. And I said to you, and it's funny, I'm going to say it here, I felt like I had a snorkel mm. that was going into the left side of my brain. And the, the, whatever it was, the information was coming out through there and then it had to come out of my mouth. And if I tried to think of an answer, it would like have exploded the whole thing and it wouldn't have worked. So like I was really conscious that I was not to have thought and I was just to speak. Wow. That which, you know, like, again, I've channeled stuff before, but never, never like this. Yeah. So tell us some of the questions that your friend asked. And um, So the happened? first question that she asked, I think it was the first question which, that she asked was, 
Um, how how do I learn to have faith in myself? How do I learn to have complete faith in myself and the universe? Great question. A really reasonable question. And so the answer, and they're a bit fuzzy, like I can't remember them really clearly. We recorded it, but it didn't record properly Ooh, for whatever reason. <laughs> yes. um, but but so I can grasp them, but like I haven't got the complete clarity about it. But what it said about trust, it was. Um, I've got the feeling, like, it's like someone who asks that question doesn't already have trust. And usually humans want to get to complete trust in themselves and complete trust in the universe. And it was interesting because that's how my friend framed the question, but it was saying that that's generally what they want to do. And that's really the recipe to set yourself up for it to fail because you have to, it said you have to think of trust as like a branch on a tree. And you've got to wait for the branch to grow and be solid and steady before you can stand on it. Like if you try and get yourself to complete trust of yourself, complete trust of the universe before you've built the capacity to do that, it's too much weight on the branch and you're going to fall down. And that's just going to revalidate your feeling that you shouldn't trust yourself, you shouldn't trust the universe because you come crushing down. So it was about, and it also said your mind will find evidence of the opposite. And you, you don't want to argue with your mind. So, and I'm summarizing. Um, so you, you need to build it up really slowly, really gradually, rather than going, how do I have complete faith in the world and in myself? You know, it has to be a process that takes you along gradually and allows the trust to build rather than having too much pressure put on it, which is what we tend to do. Oh, I love that. I love that metaphor of the branch though. Me too. That is just gold. So good. Yeah, so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what about, then Then what? There was, a, there was lots of questions. So Yeah, so the next question she asked was, um, how, like, how, what is fear? How do I deal with fear? And it said that fear is the symptom of being in the illusion of separation. It, it said, she asked a couple of questions, so I'm just going to conflate the answers and give it all to you. Um, yeah. She talked. To, she asked about how people always want to seek validation and love from the outside, and and why do we do that? And you know how can we not do that? And the answer. This is one of my favorite things that it said, and it was, human beings are born fully loving themselves. Like you watch a baby, they're you know like a small child before they've had a chance to get it beaten out of them, they love themselves and they feel like they deserve all the things. Right? That's why there's tantrums. <laughs> and that, but what happens? Yeah. But what happens is, and this is why your work is so powerful. What happens is they they there's like an enmeshment situation that happens. So over time, the parent shows the child when you behave like this, I give you love. When you behave like this, I withdraw love. Mm-hmm. And at the start, the kids will tantrum against that because they have an innate feeling that they're lovable, however they are. Like that's just yeah. who and how they are. But over time, they get worn down. And gradually, you start to take your attention to the outer rather than the inner, and you look for love outside of yourself. But the human love is like conditional. Like we will evolve eventually, but right now it's quite conditional. So it's like it's like a mirage. It's like the illusion of deep divine love. Like it's not the same as that. And what it said, which was so cool, is that because we've been told that certain parts of us aren't acceptable when we behave in this way we don't get love we end up rejecting those parts of ourselves we put them away we don't show them we think that they're bad and we try to be the form of ourselves that will give us access to human love and that gets reinforced 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 but the thing is every time we cut off a part of ourselves and reject it we're actually moving away from wholeness yes like we are, we are dividing ourselves and the re- it's like this cycle that then repeats because we keep looking for love outside of ourselves and then we morph ourselves, reject ourselves, we feel less whole and we want that more and more and more. So we're willing to cut off more parts of ourselves to make sure that we get that love and it, but, and it is, it's like it is love but that human limited love is not the same but, but as the divine love but we're drawn to it because we're chasing wholeness and we get kind of twisted in our idea of what wholeness is. We love love because it makes us feel like we're coming back to the whole, back to where we started. Mm. But the thing is, we've never left that. Like that's always at the core and at the centre, but we're just caught in the illusion 
And then we chase it and we chase it and we chase it. We reject ourselves more, we reject ourselves more, we get more addicted and it's like this cycle that continues. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it also said that it's changing, that the consciousness on the planet is increasing and it won't stay like this, like it won't stay that we keep perpetuating this over and over and over again. And parenting now has already started to change quite dramatically and there are some things that aren't ideal about how that's going but it'll get sorted out in time. And the, the, you know, the energy of the planet will increase, human consciousness will increase, we won't be perpetuating it, but not to think that where we are now is wrong. Yeah, that's right. I just <laughs> remembered you, you, you were so excited because you kind of got this also this I know. huge understanding of that none of it's right or wrong. Yes, none of it. Because if you, got it, if you think about it, the process of evolution and expansion builds on itself. Mm. And I think I said to you the first time we talked, it's like, you know, one day you're a doctor, right? Before that, you were five years old. Five years old isn't bad, but you evolve and you get more skills and you grow and you expand in whatever way. But we tend to think that things are wrong. Like, you know, we should be different. Which Why do we not love ourselves? It should be the... Um, and it's not wrong. It just is. And there's a process. Like, there's, there's an expansion that's going always. Yeah. So the, the, what it said also was, um, so she asked about fear and that's when it said fear is when you're buying into the illusion of the separation. Yeah. And fear and doubt, like they're not wrong. Yeah. They're letting you know that you're in the illusion of the separation. And, and they're part of that the whole. Fear. fear and doubt are part of the whole. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. But also it's a clue about where you're hanging out. Like, are you hanging out on the surface where you're like, blah, 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 tossed yeah. around by everything that happens? Or are you, you know, centering into, it kept say, saying like the ocean in the self, the ocean of the self. It's like at the, mm -hmm. you know, if you imagine an ocean, there's all these tumultuous stuff on top, but the bottom face of the ocean, there's calmness there and there's silence. <laughs> I assume that's how I see it. But that's what it felt like. Like, it felt like I was sitting in the bottom of the ocean, just like being. And it was the most calm, peaceful thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, more questions. What were the other questions? Um, so I asked this because I work with money, right? And so I said, why is there so much poverty on our planet? And yeah. it said, because people feel like they're not free, like they don't have choice and they're not supported or powerful. And so you can't expect the externals of your planet to show anything other than a reflection of what people are feeling on the inside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we, with our human minds and ideas, me at least, and I work with money, you know, it's really easy to think, well, why don't we just, we've got enough resources, why is everyone, like, why is there poverty? It's wrong, it shouldn't, we have to fight it. And yes, we should work towards allowing everyone to have access to resource and equality, absolutely. But also, we can't just magic wand the universe without dealing with these insecurities and this lack and this, you know, limitation we have within ourselves as a culture and then expect it to be different when it comes to our financial, which is so linked to money and freedom and power in our world. Yeah, because it's always the underlying belief yeah. system. And, yeah. And, and the feeling as well. Yeah. We have around it, yeah. And, and also, it's like... Again, humanity is going us through a stage of evolution. It's growing. It's expanding, which means where we are now is not wrong, which means that on a level, poverty is not wrong. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's hard for me to stomach. <laughs> <laughs> but it's on a deeper a level, yeah, it, it, it is. It's a reflection. It, like, it's unreasonable to expect it to not exist unless we uplift all of our individual and collective feeling of empowerment, freedom, and flow which is what money either gives us or takes away from us. Money does nothing. We do it ourselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Mm. Uh, what, what else? What else did she ask? There's a few more questions. Yeah, there was more questions. Um, around, I asked about, about relationships. Yeah. Sorry. What was that? There was one about relationships too, something about. Oh, was it? Yeah. About, oh, maybe, maybe that was the love one. Yeah, about how we morph ourselves into yeah, reject ourselves and morph ourselves. Yeah. Um, 
I made, I did make a couple of notes. I can actually check them. Hang on. Oh yeah. So one of them, she asked me, um, why would somebody squash themselves and not be the big powerful version of themselves in their life? So the answer to that was really succinct and simple. And it said, because they don't feel safe to do otherwise. Mm. And then it talked about something that blew my mind, which was about, it said, um, we are often more comfortable with discomfort because oh, discomfort yes. is right. familiar. Yeah. And to us, familiar equals safety. And so we will often choose discomfort because it feels safe. Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And it also said, because of the core of you is like this amazing divine thing that nothing can touch, like nothing can touch it. Yeah. Like even when you die, it doesn't touch, you just change form, right? You're an energy. Energy doesn't die. Energy doesn't end. Like it changes yeah. form. So yeah. it's, it's like we have such a misunderstanding and the depth of us can't be touched by anything. And it said this, um, if humanity could understand that at the basis there is no problem, the growth and expansion of humanity would be accelerated like a million times over, yeah. but there's no rush. It's not wrong that we're not doing that and getting there quickly. <laughs> However, it's important to note that there is a choice to live with more freedom. It's available, yeah. but it's a choice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's such a powerful message. Yeah. And the other thing it said, which was kind of weird and sort of cute, it goes, um, no matter how unsafe you're feeling, you can always find the feeling of safety. It said, it said um, even if the only safety you can find is in, it said, um, your left pinky toe, because your left pinky toe is right now not in any danger, if you take your consciousness to the safety currently being experienced by your left pinky toe, you can access safety and it's something that can build and it's a matter of changing your perspective. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's totally it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And it's so funny, Rady, you keep saying it. <laughs> so this yeah. Is, and where I did ask you what it was and you're like, I don't really know yet. I don't. Um, so if you're listening to this and you're hearing and you and you you're wanting to kind of understand more about what this it is, what would what would you say to people around understanding that? Um, well, I, I'm going to answer another question that my friend asked and come back to this one because okay, I think cool. it will be helpful. Yeah, so yeah. she's she's very spiritual and reads lots of books, does lots of things, and she yeah. she said she asked a question about the ascended masters, and oh, she goes, yeah, yeah, you know the ascended masters, like what's the go with them? She asked basically. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it said, um, she goes, are they real? And she said, it said, it said, um, the ascended masters are real, but also they're not real. It so said, for somebody who doesn't know what the ascended masters mean, what would, what, can you explain it in like? Um, so, so some people feel like when they're doing a healing, they can call on Jesus or Mary yeah. Magdalene or Kuan Yin or Durga oh, or any of the yeah. deities or people yeah. who we believe are, have been highly evolved, mm -hmm. um, you can meditate, connect in with them, ask them for assistance. Th that's a belief that sort of percolates around the spiritual communities. Yes. Yeah. So, so she asked if they were real. And the answer was, they're real and they're not real. And it said in more detail, it said, they're real in that it helps the humans to be able to connect into that particular energy Mm. But then not but humans think that you know it's that person with that name with that energy and it's not really like that because the ascended masters are a part of the whole mm. and, and it said to my friend as are you and as <laughs> we all are right and so I feel like when I say it like I could just feel information coming through and then out my mouth and I don't know if it's like God or a set of beings or energy or what, like I don't know. And it didn't come in a way that told me what it was. But the divinity in it, like the deliciousness of it, like the power in it makes me be really open to trusting it, even though I don't technically know the source. Yeah. Um, but it feels like it wasn't, it wasn't from me. 
So oh, I was yeah. blown away by the answers. I was like, oh my God, I've never thought of it like that before. That we like separate ourselves and reject ourselves for the like a, a mirage of love when really all we want is connection. Mm. And that we've always got it, we just forget. Like I sort of had ideas about that, but that clarity, that didn't come from me. Like that came to me. So well, that's why I did, thought, but not. <laughs> oh, that? It kind of did because you are part of the whole. It's kind of a yeah, that's right. Of why so that's right. Is, you know, yeah, it's and actually, my friend did ask because is this made finding all of this that's difficult? You know? Yeah, that's right. We so whole, I, and we're disconnected and and all of those things. Yeah, time. trying to define everything all the time, yeah. like the ascended masters. So our minds yeah. understand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so our minds understand. Yeah. yeah. So my friend asked, she goes, "Is this made as higher self being channeled?" And it said, "Yes and no." Because it's all a part of the whole. So it depends where your perspective lies. Yeah. So, you know, we're all a part of the whole. But we kind of don't live like we are. Yeah, yeah. And can you talk a little bit more about the feeling state that you were in when that happened? Because you said there was some kind of pressure around your head a little bit too. And Yeah, so, so physically, oh, this is funny. Physically, it felt, like I said, like there was a snorkel coming out of like my mind, my brain. And it's like the information was going into the top of the snorkel and then it was coming out of my mouth. Yeah. But it felt like pressure. Like it, it wasn't painful, but it was un slightly uncomfortable. It was like not, not a headache, but two steps before it below a headache, it felt like. Yeah. Um, and I said to my friend, because when this was coming through, I could be myself and I could also be the thing, it, yeah. whatever. Um, and so I said to her, this is really weird. It feels like pressure on the left side of my head. And this is a woman who massages me weekly for like an extended period of time. So she knows my body really well. And she goes, yeah, I know I can see it. She said it really casually. And I'm like, what do you mean you can see it? Like, <laughs> um, And she goes, yeah. She goes, there's a vein sticking out on the left side of your forehead. And obviously that's not a, like, that, like that's not a thing normally. It doesn't normally happen. And then she started massaging my head. She said, oh, my God, the right side of your head feels normal and the left side of your head is really tense. So she's, like, trying to break it up and, like, open it. <laughs> um, but it felt to me like that's because it was the first time. And then I ended up going to bed that night at 7.30 and just listening to music, I felt like my brain was getting rewired and I felt like I needed no stimulation and I just needed space and rest. And then the next morning, and even now, it's like, it's not just a snorkel anymore. Now it's like this big. Wow. wow. And so I feel like as I get acclimatised to it and more regular use of it, um, it yeah. won't be yet. Yeah. Watch this space, everyone. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, gonna, I mean, it's like amazing. So amazing. Yeah. So and amazing. like, it wasn't shy. Oh. Like, it went straight to the gold. <laughs> it did. It did. <laughs> Yeah, because it, it has the answer straight yeah. over, right there. Yeah, that's right. Like really, yeah. like honestly. And I asked it, "Is this something I'm going to be able to do all the time?" And he goes, yeah. "No." Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and I started laughing. I like that's disappointing. And they, and they said, "But you will." It's like don't expect to be able to do it all the time right now. It's something that you will develop the skill of like connecting. It feels like kind of tuning in. Yeah. Um, Walking out along that branch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Oh no, I trust it completely, but but the, the skill of doing it is the branch. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I felt like I haven't really tried to do it since because it feels like I'm my mind's still getting sorted. And yeah. I also got told that the right side of my mind is gonna need work as well, because most of it feels like it's been here, mm -hmm. but this side needs to be worked on too to kind of get to the same level so it doesn't start questioning that. Oh, how do you think you'll do that? The right oh, it'll just happen um, yeah yeah i don't know yeah I, I don't know how any of it's really happening it's just happening <laughs> how exciting i'm just along for the ride but you know what like not so that experience i had with you in the session where it was like oh my god everything's possible i also had this um i've struggled with surrender sometimes in my life and um letting go and going with the flow and stuff and i, I like i'm a ninja at it now compared to what i was before yeah. But there's still, you know, expansion to have happened there. But I had this moment like about a week ago where I actually said to, I call it God, you can call it the universe, you can call it whatever. And I said, I really honestly feel like I want to be a vehicle for the expansion of the planet and humanity. And I said these words, I heard them before, but I never thought I would use them. But I said, so use me. Yeah. Like, 
whatever, whatever has to happen, whatever, like where, what I need to go and do, like I'll just do it so I'm ready. So use me. And I hadn't remembered that until now. Like I said that leading up to this. I said that recently too. Oh, watch out. We'll be doing one of these. Yeah, yeah. But I meant it with every fibre of my being. Yeah. And I have wanted to feel that way for a long time. And then I guess I stopped trying and then all of a sudden I uncovered it and it was just always there. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so yeah. that's it. So what message would you have, like, for, to finish up with the people that have watched, what message would you have as far as this whole experience goes for others? There was, a, there was a couple of other things that it said that I think would form part of my message. So it, it said this, it said, the point of spiritual experiences is to give you a taste of what's possible. And it also said that the, as you have them, just like moments of peace, moments of joy, like a spiritual experience doesn't have to be this big, dramatic, you know, thing. But those moments of being so deeply connected, when, when you take the time to kind of build that, and experience that as much as possible and open to that as much as possible and allow that to become familiar because when things are familiar, they feel safe. Yeah. Um, so, so it also said that it's like that beautiful divine, divine energy is inside of all of us. On top of that is like our blocks or whatever. And we tend to go, I have to get rid of this block. I have to get rid of this block. I have to get rid of but you can actually like cut straight through to the source inside of you. And the more you kind of consciously intend that and value those moments rather than sometimes we just go, oh, yeah, that was good, and then move on to the next thing, and then move on to the next thing. And we're always looking to grow and expand by clearing out the blocks. But diving into the joy, mm -hmm. like that is such a healing space because it's actually us being whole. And when you feel whole, you don't chase all the random shit. In the same way. So I would say work at, which means play with, not like heavily hard work, yeah. play with connecting in to that ocean of divinity that is inside of us. There is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with our planet. There is actually no problem. So what I'm walking away from it and really holding on in my experience, and I'm lucky God I've, but I got to feel it, but we all get to feel it in chunks. It's just that I got it in a really intense space consistently so I could appreciate it. But I guarantee that everyone else gets tastes of it all the time because it said that. So if we can build that, become really comfortable, familiar, remember that that is actually our natural state and open. Yes, yes. Like it just, it is. Without all the bullshit, like that's actually who we are. It's who it's who, our wholeness yeah. uh, is who we are. And and there is never a problem, no matter what it looks like, mm -hmm. no matter what it looks like, and no matter what your mind is thinking about what's in front of you. There's a way that at the base, there's no problem. Something's being reflected to someone. Yeah, which which we might just quickly touch on the the fact that coming into those sessions, maybe you had some pretty big stuff going on. I've had a really fucking challenging life. Yeah. In so and many ways. You've had a huge challenge. With yeah, you. many, many, many challenges. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so many. There was lots of, um, you know, some big, like, because I'm thinking when people are watching this, it's like, oh, well, that's okay for you kind of thing. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> I've had, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. you know what? I'm going to list some stuff. My mum was an abusive alcoholic who told me she wished I'd never been born and that I was the worst thing that ever happened to her and my her life would be awesome without me. I've had fibromyalgia to the point where my arms didn't work, so dragging a towel across my body was way too hard. Like I couldn't manage that, let alone making myself a cup of tea. I've been poor moist of my life, which is why I now work on money energy. I've had an abusive emotional relationship. There's like so much stuff. I was in a yeah. cult and I was sexually abused by the cult leader. Like, yeah. but every single thing in my life has led me towards self-empowerment, discernment, freedom, and flow. Every single one of those things was a block to that. So I, I was living it because I was blocked to that. So the work has been to, you know, clear that up and reclaim the awesome that's inside of me just as it's inside of everybody. Like I, what I had 
was an experience that was special, but I'm not special. And we all have special experiences all the time. Like I'm special the way I'm special, but it's the same way as everyone else is special. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing like that as well, because I know um, for some people in the group and for, some, you know, for people hearing this, it's that they might be in that place now. Mm. That's, that's why it's, it, it's important to hear all the amazing spiritual stuff. It's also important to hear that this is, you know, if they're in that place that, that, and then you're experiencing this now. So awesome. yeah. I will, if we're going we're gonna to finish up, it feels like, but there's one more thing I'll say that came through in that, that channeling thing or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And it was, humanity is moving to a place where the vibration is going to lift enough that growth can come from expansion and joy. But yeah. in the past, the way the energy was and the density of it, growth had to come from struggle. Yes. So, so I lived what I lived for a reason, but it's not necessary to suffer into expansion. Yes. Contrast, yeah, yeah. contrast is a thing that will always be around. You will always have levels yeah. of contrast. Even when you're like, you know, enlightened or whatever, there'll be levels of contrast that you can use to expand from. But it can be easy and it can be joyous. So it said it's been necessary in the past and humanity is still in a place where parts of it are necessary, but mm -hmm. don't get attached to it because that's changing and don't expect that you need it. So you don't have to struggle yeah. through pain to grow. You don't have to. You can choose yeah. to. Yes, I did, I guess, in lots of ways. Yeah. yeah. I often point that out to people, yes. Yeah. But okay. again, I knew that as an idea before, but now I like, oh, I just want to push it into everybody's energy field, like from the experience, yeah. because it was so powerful. But it's available. Like, again, I'm not special, yeah. any more special than anyone else. Well, guess what? You just did put it in everyone's energy field. Yeah, I'll just that recording. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I'll have some of that. <laughs> yeah do <laughs> so thank you so much any anything else you think can think of or um yeah like the hunt for love outside of you mm. is going in the wrong direction it will never fulfill you it will never fulfill you in a consistent way but it's hard to know that so just know that deep inside of you is all of the love, all of the reserves of love that you could ever need. The person in front of you only ever triggers your contact of that. Like they're a trigger for that experience, but the experience is always there. And if you just like slip down into the ocean that you are, yeah. the divinity that's inside of you and remind yourself, even if you don't believe it at the start, but gradually build like the branch of trust and faith, the feeling, the belief, the idea that there's no problem, changes everything 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 mm. yeah beautiful thank you so much thank you that was fun <laughs> so fun so fun <laughs> <laughs> which again is yeah yeah it's so cool well, that's the point the other thing that it said as well it's like the the basis of life is joy it's just yeah. we get complicated and we get serious and we get heavy but like it's supposed to be fun yeah yeah mm. So much fun <laughs> go out and have some fun this yeah <laughs> fun is a spiritual experience it is mm. it is so cool <laughs> well thank you thank, thank you, you. Yeah. and um yeah you can find you at soul free now you're on instagram and facebook aren't you? yep yep yeah. i am and we're gonna have a youtube channel soon because there's some stuff i need to share so oh, it's active goodness. now but it's not massive yeah. yet but it will be so and this yeah. video will be on there. Nice. <laughs> Yay. Where it all began. Yep. I love it. Well, not really, but sort of. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. Thank you. That was really fun. Yeah, it was. All right. We'll sign out. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. Bye.